Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. It's Halloween, and we're gonna photograph a ghost in space again. Or Halloween's already over, and you're taking your decomposing pumpkins, setting them on fire in preparation for the upcoming fall goat roast. Either way, we're photographing the ghost of Cassiopeia, so join us in today's episode of... The ghost of Cassiopeia is, of course, found in the constellation of Cassiopeia. Where I live here in Mississippi, Cassiopeia is kind of directly overhead, but in the north, as soon as the sun goes down, and it slowly sets in the west throughout the night. So it's an all-night target. Cassiopeia is, of course, well known for its W or M shape, I guess depending on your perspective and what time of night you look at it. And the nebula is actually found kind of in the middle around a star called Gamma Cassiopeiae, or I've also heard Gamma Cassiopeia, but to just to make things simple, we're gonna call it Gamma or the Gamma Star. I'm definitely gonna say this is not a beginner target, but it's not a super advanced one either, but this is actually quite difficult and it has a lot to do with the star Gamma. Gamma is extremely bright and the ghost is extremely dim. And when you try to do long exposures, you end up blowing out the star really bad and leaving abnormal looking halos around it. Let's take a quick look at a photo I took a few years ago of the ghost of Cassiopeia with this rig right here. This is a 275 millimeter focal length telescope with a Canon T5i Astro modified DSLR. It's a crop sensor camera. And as you can see, this is a pretty wide photograph, but if we look at the gamma star, it has a very unnatural looking halo, which I do not like. Now the way we're gonna to try to deal with this is just to take shorter exposures to try not to blow out the star too bad. Also, we're gonna to try to use better quality filters because a cheap filter can really cause halos and flares and things like that. I'll be using the Altair six nanometer dual narrowband filter. Got it right here in my little filter drawer. And for the telescope, I'll be using the Ascar 103 APO. It's a 700 millimeter refractor telescope. It's got an F ratio of 6.8. So normally I do five minute exposures because it's not a really fast telescope, but I think five minute exposures might blow the star gamma out a little too bad. So we're gonna probably bring it down to three and see if that helps. I'll also be using my Sunbleach ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro camera. This is a micro four thirds cooled astronomy camera. I'm using the ASI Air Mini to control everything, a Pegasus Pocket Power Box Micro to power everything, I'll be auto-guiding, and everything will be on my trusty old Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. Now this spot isn't actually where I'm gonna be shooting tonight. I'm just standing on the back side of the house to try to block some of this crazy wind we've been having today. But let's quit messing around, fast forward to tonight, and let's actually try to take this picture. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna polar align my mount to the North Star manually. Now I know a lot of control software like the ASI Air or Nina can help you do this for you digitally, but for some reason, I think it works a lot better to get a head start manually looking through the polar scope of this mount. A lot of new mounts don't have that feature, but I absolutely love it, so we're gonna get started doing that. I pull up an app like Polar Aligner Pro and I search for the Skywatcher reticle, and then I look for the white dot and see where that is in the polar scope, and that's what I try to align my particular mount to. In order to see through the polar scope in this mount, I actually have to turn my telescope sideways like this, and that actually opens up a hole to see right through this polar scope straight to the North Star. So now I can get down here, look for the North Star and try to get it aligned. And it looks like the polar scope is a little off. I'm gonna straighten it up so the reticle looks like it's straight up and down. There we go. And it actually looks like my polar alignment is pretty accurate, pretty close to where it was last night. I just need to make a minor adjustment. It's really nice actually seeing what your adjustments do through the polar scope because a tiny minor adjustment does nothing sometimes and other times it moves it way too much. 
That would drive me crazy when I would be trying to align this with the ASI Air. And sometimes my adjustments would do nothing. Sometimes they would move it way too much. Now I can actually see what that's doing. So I know it's just not my software going crazy. It's actually the mount kind of being a little finicky. So now I'm gonna put this mount back in the home position and I'm going to use the ASI Air software to finish the polar alignment. So I probably should have just left it alone at first because every time I touched it, it just got even farther and further off. But I finally got the numbers to where I want them to be right here. And so now I'm gonna go try to focus on a star and get this thing rolling. I'm gonna change from PA or polar align right here to preview, tap this little search icon right here, tap the other search icon right here. And you probably can't see this, but CAF is the name of the star in Cassiopeia. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that because it's one of my most recent searches. Tap it and hit go to down here. Now it's gonna point up at the star calf. Now I'm gonna take my little cheap 3D printed Batnoff mask. And I'm gonna put it on the top of the telescope. Take a couple of test shots on this star and see if the diffraction spikes look right. All right, there we go. Let's zoom in. I'm trying to get this center spike right in the middle of this X and it looks like it's a little to the top of the X. So I'm gonna adjust my focus and try again. Okay, this is my second focus shot and this looks a lot better. This looks a lot closer. So we're gonna go ahead and move on from here. I'm gonna go ahead and take a few flat frames to get this out of the way. So when I start shooting, I can just go to bed. I'm gonna go ahead and move the telescope until it's pointing straight up in the sky. And that was clearly the wrong way. There we go. Let's make sure and take this Bettenhoff mask off. Now I'm using a ZWO 294MC Pro camera and this camera does not do well with short exposure. So my flat frames have to be at least five seconds. Goal is a five second exposure. And I think I've about got that down pat with this filter I'm using, the Altair six nanometer dual narrowband filter. So first I'm gonna take this pillowcase, put it on and kind of double it. One wrap, two. A lot of people would use rubber bands. I'm not gonna do that. Then I'll take a sheet of white paper and put it on top and an LED tracer pad. It's just a, basically a white light. Now I only know this setup works from experience and most cameras you don't have to do all this crap to take a flat frame. It's much simpler, but for this camera, it's just weird and this is what works for me. Give a little power to the LED tracer pad. This thing has a really crappy adjustable brightness. It pretty much just stays at one brightness. I can't figure out how to dim it. So this is how this is gonna have to work. Now keep in mind, for this particular camera, I need a minimum of a five second exposure. So let's take that five second exposure and see what it looks like. And here we have it. You can see down here, the histogram is about in the middle, maybe slightly left of middle, which is kind of where I want it. I mean, it could be a little left of the middle, but this works for me. If I was to change anything, it's either gonna be way too much or way too little. So I'm gonna change from preview to auto run, tap the hamburger icon, Hit refresh up here and clear out anything I've done in the past. Hit the plus icon, select flat, and exposure time is going to be five seconds. You use the default gain of this camera, which is 120. I'm gonna repeat it 30 times. Hit okay. I'm gonna make sure my ASIR doesn't shut down or try to go to the home position when it's done. I don't want Meridian Flip turned on. And that's it, I'm gonna back out and hit start. Confirm. And now I'm gonna go inside and have a drink. I'll be back in about five minutes when it's done. And we're done. And apparently I didn't properly check, don't go to home position because it did. And I almost lost my LED light panel. It almost fell off, but I saved it. But this is why we take flat frames. You see these, these dots here? Like these are dust motes that are on somewhere, maybe my telescope lens or maybe my sensor. It's really dusty and nasty out here in the country. So this happens every night. No matter how much I clean, I always get these, these little dust motes. So 
that's why I take flats every single night. Now, as far as dark frames, I've got this camera's internal temperature set to minus 10 degrees Celsius, so I can take those anytime I want, as long as the camera temperature is set to minus 10. So I'll probably do those tomorrow. Okay, now it's finally time to start shooting the ghost of Cassiopeia, so let's slew to it. I'm changing from auto run back to preview, go into the search, and basically I was going to type in ghost of Cassiopeia, but I just got G-H-O and it popped up right here. So I'm going to tap it. There it is right there at the top of the list. Tap it. Make sure it's highlighted and hit the go to button right down here. Okay, I've got the ghost all centered up. I'm gonna go ahead and start auto guiding. I'm gonna tap this little icon right here in the top. Tap this over here to clear out any auto guiding information from the past. And then hit this little loop icon right here to start my guiding camera. Now I can hardly see any stars in this. That means I have to turn my camera lights off for the rest of the video. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And if you can even see this, this looks so much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this little target button. It'll start calibrating and auto guiding. And as you can see, it's selected multiple stars. It's gonna start calibrating. It'll soon begin guiding, and then we can take pictures. Very long exposures. Well, at least for this target, maybe two to three minutes. And we're finally guiding. Considering the wind is over 10 miles an hour, I'm pretty impressed with these guiding numbers. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start taking these pictures. I'm not even gonna do a test shot. I'm just gonna go ahead close out of guiding, switch from preview to auto run, tap this little hamburger icon. We're going to close out of our flats here. Add some light frames. We're going to do 180 seconds for exposure time. Gain, of course, default 120 for this camera. This camera's default gain is 120. And we're going to repeat this 60 times. This time I'm gonna make sure it goes to the home position and shuts down when it's done. No need to turn on the Meridian flip. Gonna hit the start button and we're done. And here's our first shot. Oh, the ghost is hardly visible, but it's gonna look fantastic after a few hours. So I think I'm gonna wrap this night up. It's time for bed. So I shot this ghost over several nights and got about 13 hours worth of data on it. And I just took dark frames one night and used them for all the other nights. It was really easy. Now in the end, after stacking, I still saw a little bit of a halo from the Gamma Star. Now it's nothing serious. It's not one of those weird, unnatural looking ones, but still, if you come into this problem like me and you might want to get rid of it, I can show you how. Or you might think it looks natural with it and just want to leave it alone. But let's jump on the computer and see how you might want to remove the halo. Now this is not going to be a processing tutorial at all. I'm just showing you how to remove this halo in Photoshop and it would probably only work on this image. I know it won't work with All Attack and the Horsehead Nebula and it might not work with the Witch Head, but it definitely works with this photo. So if you've got the newest version of Photoshop, we'll try it out. But first we're going to look at PixInsight and just see how the pictures turned out. All right, here's my master stacked file, 13 hours worth of data. We're just going to stretch it to see what it looks like. And there you go. And you can see what I'm talking about with the halo. Now, after I've processed it, stretched it, corrected the colors, and removed the stars, I get something that looks a little more like this. And if we look at the image of just the stars, you can see that gamma is still there. And in the starless image, it left behind this big halo right here. Once again, you might wanna keep this. It might look natural and good to you. And if that's the case, this is about what your final image might look like. But if you don't like that halo, let's look at the starless image in Photoshop. All right, here we go in Photoshop. I've already duplicated my background layer, so I'm working on a copy. And what we're looking for is the Remove tool. It's a new kind of AI removing tool. I like it better than it's all the other ones, like Spot Healing Brush, things like that. But it's under the Band-Aid little icon. Come down to Remove tool, and it gives you a brush. You can adjust the brush sizes with your bracket keys, or right up here where it says Size. But basically what you do is you paint 
in this little halo. Once you click down the mouse, do not let it go until you've completely painted it and filled it in. The second you let go of your mouse, it's gonna start removing whatever you painted. So just hold it down, start drawing around this, and completely fill it in before you let go of the mouse button. Make sure you get everything. There we go, and I'm just gonna let go of the mouse. Okay, it did an okay job. Sometimes it gets it right on the first time, sometimes it doesn't, and this time it didn't. So we're just gonna do it again because I can still see a little of the outer edge of that circle. Get it all in there. All right, and that pretty much took care of it. Now the halo is gone. Now I'm left with just these two images. I can recombine them and we'll pretty much have a finished project. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I know this wasn't a full tutorial. I got more of those coming out soon, but mainly this was just kind of my experience and I hope you found a couple of tips that worked for you. If you did, let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, leave me a like, of course. And I wanna give a special shout out to my patrons on Patreon. We have our own private Discord. And everybody on there just pretty much become like family. I love you guys so much. And speaking of the Discord and the Patreon, starting in August, we started doing a, some small monthly challenges. August was Andromeda. We all tried to photograph Andromeda. September was the constellation Cygnus. Anything we could shoot in Cygnus. October has been spooky pictures. So I want to go ahead and share August's Andromeda winner with you right now. Big shout out to Pluto. You did an amazing job on this. And I'm going to leave a link to his socials below so you guys can go check him out. In my next video, I'm going to show September's winner, Cygnus. And in the video after that, I'll show October's winner for Spooky Season. So we're going to end things with Pluto's Andromeda and my ghost of Cassiopeia. As always, everybody, stay spacey. Watch out for snakes, clear skies, and we'll see you in the next one.